Lumber prices are not coming back down anytime soon. Matter of fact, they're fixing to go higher and I'll prove it to you. Stay tuned. How you doing? I'm Matt with 731woodworks.com. Today, I wanna to talk to you about why the lumber prices have increased astronomically, why I don't think they're gonna come back down anytime soon. And if you stay tuned, I'll tell you how we can kind of work around some of that price increase as woodworkers and DIYers. So to get a general idea of what lumber is gonna cost in the future, all you have to do is go to the stock market at nasdaq.com and look at the commodities future price on lumber. So what is a futures price? A futures contract is an agreement or a contract to buy a raw material at a future date at a specific price. And in this case, we're talking about lumber per thousand board feet. So in April of 2019, lumber futures were hovering around the $350 mark, give or take a few dollars. In April of 2020, they were actually just a little bit lower at about $330 per thousand board feet. In April of 2021 is kind of where the perfect storm has come together, which I'll talk about in a minute on what's driving this price increase, but $1,294 per thousand board feet. That is what is driving the prices high, and I'll tell you what's driving the futures high. And the bad news is the futures price from May 21 to November 21 is only about a 22% difference which really isn't enough of a discount to signal any type of future decline in the price of lumber. And even worse news is the May 22 futures price is only about 25% less than it is now, which again, is not gonna drive a significant decrease in the price of lumber. So why is this happening? Based on everything that I'm reading and watching, it's really a mixed bag or a perfect storm coming together to drive these prices up. In 2019, when the futures were about $300 per thousand board feet, it hurt a lot of mills and a lot of them were struggling to keep up at that price or to, to maintain at that price. And so they started shutting down or decreasing their capacity. And because of everything going on in 2020, a lot of mills started decreasing their uh, manpower based on restrictions that they were having to go get under de depending on the state they were in, as well as safety precautions they were having to take into effect on their workers. So that decrease in, in personnel also decreased supply. Some home building had declined early in 2020 and that hurt some mills trying to supply those. So they weren't able to actually produce any lumber, which they can't employ people if they're not producing things. Also in this mix is Canada. Canada supplies, Canada, eh? Canada actually supplies a lot of lumber to the United States, especially the east and central part of the United States. They supply a lot of the lumber that's used to build homes with. Canada has very strict rules on how much they allow to be cut out of their forest. It's all uh, under their government. And a few years ago, they actually reduced the amount that was allowed to be cut. That uh, compounds the supply chain problem. Also, a lot of your home builders and lumber suppliers were waiting on that price to decrease before they started buying it up. And now that the prices have gone to here, they're at a point to where spring and summer's coming on. They have to build their homes. They have uh, contracts they have to fulfill. So now they have no choice but to buy that lumber at that price. We actually had a contractor come and give us an estimate on our deck roof to put a roof over our entire deck uh, at back October of last year. He said he called a couple of months later and said, hey, I'm not gonna come give you an estimate because lumber prices are so high and that's gonna drive the price of the estimate probably outside of what you're wanting to pay. I also have a friend of mine who's building a home right now who had to go back to the bank and borrow an extra $10,000 just to cover the increase in the price of his lumber. In fact, the average cost to build a home has increased $24,000 because of the lumber increase since 2019. And then you gotta add on the demand in 2020 where a lot of people were at home due to everything that was going on and they started working on their own homes and building their own DIY projects. They started going to Home Depot and Lowe's, buying up lumber there, and that drove, that drove the demand even higher. So how do I know that Home Depot and Lowe's were selling a bunch of stuff? Go look at their 2020 earnings. Both Home Depot and Lowe's saw significant increases in sales. In physical year 2020, Home Depot had $132.1 billion in sales, which was an increase of over $29 billion. That was a 19.9% increase over 2019. Home Depot is doing very well with everything that's going on. 
supplying all this stuff. Lowe's had a similar increase. 2019, they saw $72.14 billion in revenue. In 2020, that jumped 24.19% to $89.59 billion. Your big home builders, the big contractors, are not buying their lumber from Home Depot and Lowe's stores. That's me and you. We're buying those project uh, materials from Home Depot and Lowe's to do our own renovations, our own DIY woodworking projects. We, in America, are driving those sales. We also cannot forget in 2020, there was a massive wildfire season. By December 2020, there were 10.3 million acres of land burned. And that's compared to just 4.7 million in 2019. And that's according to the National Interagency Fire Center. And all of this combined to create a perfect storm for these prices to just skyrocket. Hey, if you're getting value out of this video, click that subscribe button for me, click the bell icon right next to it so you get notified of all our new content. Also, if you don't mind, I would greatly appreciate it if you share this with someone who you think will get value out of it also. So how are we gonna fix these high prices? It's economics 101, really. Once the builders uh, stop buying the lumber at this price, supply and demand, the, the supply will be there, the demand won't, and so the price will start dropping again. But I would not expect it ever to go back to the 2019 prices ever again. A lot of people think that the 2019 prices are up, leading up to the 2019 prices for several years, lumber was actually underpriced for what you were actually getting or what was put into making it uh, from the forest to you. And now that uh, a lot of these companies are seeing this increase in revenue, I don't think, in my opinion, that they're ever gonna wanna let that go again. I mean, who doesn't like an increase in money? You would probably like a raise at work, and once you got that raise, you wouldn't wanna give that back. You like to have that extra money in your paycheck, and so do they. I think a lot of this uh, income stream that's coming in, it will subside eventually. I wouldn't expect it in the next eight to 12 months, but I don't think the futures on lumber will be back at that $300, $350 range. I think we're gonna stay up higher. And just think about it, even if the lumber prices drop 50% from where they are right now, they would still be higher than any time in the last 60 years. That's how much they are up. I don't think the lumber companies, the suppliers, the mills, the whole chain that it takes to get the, from the tree to the lumber are gonna to wanna to give up a whole lot of revenue now. So as a woodworker, whether you're in a business to be a woodworker or if you're just doing this as a hobby, what can we do to help try to uh, save some money while also still doing our woodworking projects because we love to do this. I love building furniture, I love building woodworking projects. So what are we supposed to do about these high prices and still stay in business or even still do this for a hobby? I suggest you look for a local supplier, like a local lumber mill or a local hardwood dealer. Right now, a lot of your hardwood lumber that you can buy locally is much cheaper than what you could actually buy for at the lumber yard which is crazy. So you can look for places locally that actually sell dried hardwood ready to go for you. It's already surfaced four sides sometimes, or you can get it even live edge, or uh, you can mill it yourself. I have a video that I'll link at the end of this video and in the description below on where to buy your hardwoods and softwoods locally and online. If you can find a supplier that you can buy lumber for at cheaper than you can buy from the big box stores or your local lumber yard, by lumberyard, I mean the softwoods, pine, things like that. Buying local hardwoods, you might can create some really unique projects at a lower cost than what you could have made out of the DIY wood, pine and spruce. So hardwood will likely still be higher now than what you would have paid for softwoods in 2019. However, it is still gonna be cheaper than what you would pay for softwoods in 2021. Again, the video is in the description and it'll be linked at the end of the video. So where can you go to keep an eye on the futures price of lumber? Let me tell you. So actually all you need to do is just search lumber futures on uh, your search engine that you like, whether it be Google or Yahoo or whoever you use, or you can actually just go to nasdaq.com and just search LBS. You can keep track of the lumber futures. You can see the history uh, graph from way back all the way up until current, and you'll be able to follow those trends. And those futures are buying future lumber. So that kind of predicts what the cost is gonna be. This is unprecedented. We've never seen prices of lumber this high in history, ever. However, if you go back and look at the trend, you see that the trend is always going up. And this is just a spike. It's not like we've been seeing a decline for decades on lumber prices. So what do you do to combat that? Well, obviously, 
If you're paying higher prices for your lumber to build projects with, you have to pass that along to the customer. If you're doing this for a hobby, then your hobby just costs you more, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's just the way it is. It doesn't matter if you're playing golf or you're fishing, if things get, if the prices get raised in your hobby, then your hobby is just gonna cost more. There's really nothing you can do about the hobby side, but if you're on building woodworking projects to sell, then you'll just have to increase and pass that along to the customer. We as builders or makers, creators, don't like to do that. However, to stay in business, it's a supply and demand thing. If they want the project, they will have to pay the added cost. I hate that it has to be that way, but it's no different than when you go to the store and you buy, say, beef or whatever the price has increased over the last year. If you want that steak, you're gonna pay for it. I really hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, click that box right there to find out where you can buy lumber online and locally. Also, if you click that box, you know you're getting that big old virtual fist bump. If you haven't subscribed already, click that subscribe button. We've got a lot of awesome content coming. Don't forget to click that bell so you get notified when that is released.